Ever hear of Martin Johnson Heed? Well, neither had Carl Rice when he bought two nice-looking floral paintings at a thrift sale near his home in Tucson, Arizona. This is a treasure story that'll inspire secondhand shoppers everywhere, but send a chill up the spine of anyone who faces the task of cleaning out an attic. I, I think there's no doubt about me having treasure hunting in my blood. Ever since I've been a youngster, I've turned over cans and dug in the streets and alleys and dived into dumpsters. and. I think it's no question that it's in my blood and still is. As an adult, Carl Rice's treasure hunting had evolved into visiting estate sales whenever he could, looking for inexpensive paintings that might be worth something. He'd been doing it for years without much luck. The day before, the night before, I'd check the paper and uh, whatever other information I could get, get addresses, maybe even drive by the houses to look at them to see if if it looked like there might be some treasure in the house. And I'd settle on one or two to go to early and typically get there an hour or two before the sale, trying to be the first in the door. And I'd try to look at as many paintings as I could look at in that day and hopefully bring something home with me. That's the way we started out. We'd see a painting and Carl would always say, do you like this painting? If I didn't like the painting, he walked on. Neither Carl nor Ann had any formal art training. So they checked an old art price guide to see if the artist's name was listed. My hope was that I would find something that would be considered a masterpiece, a nice painting, and hopefully very expensive. But the Rices had been at it for years and had a garage full of not so valuable paintings. Over the three years, I would say we purchased over 1,500 paintings for sure. Recently, Carl Rice was on the verge of losing his job becoming an unemployed middle-aged man with a garage full of worthless art. We were, we were actually in what most people would call dire straits. We were one paycheck out of missing our rent payment. We didn't own a home. We were in debt from some business losses and some illnesses we'd had. Uh, we were on his last paycheck. Uh, we had a teenage daughter, and uh, we didn't know where the next paycheck was going to come from. But Carl could still look in the paper, as he always did, looking for those promising estate sales that had become his obsession. I had hoped that I had conveyed to him that if he went to the ATM and got another 50 bucks out, he might have to find another place to live. But there was a newspaper ad for a sale that looked just too promising to pass by. Carl didn't know it, but that day he was about to strike pay dirt. Always, the first thing I did when I got to the tag sale was go for the paintings. That's all I was interested in, was paintings. And uh, I, if there were no paintings, I'd get in the car and go to another tag sale. And then I, I looked, and there was this Magnolia painting that I wanted to look at. And I picked the painting up, and I, I, I just couldn't put it down. I, I don't know why, but I couldn't put it down. Carl paid 60 bucks for the painting and another small canvas by the same artist. Carl came back and he had a couple of paintings in his hand. And uh, I knew for a fact that he didn't have any money when he left. So I put two and two together as any wife would and knew that he had done just exactly what I'd ask him not to do. He had gone to the ATM again. <laughs> I had to have, take the painting home, regardless of the consequences. He handed me these paintings, and uh, I was not a happy camper at that particular time. And I thought because it was magnolias, if it was nothing, that it might at least soften the blow a little bit. Carl had gotten the magnolias because he knew magnolias was one of my favorite flowers. I love the smell of magnolias. So I looked it up. I got my little a book out and started looking. It was M.J. Heed, and there he was, right there. And she was real excited about that. It, it was a Heed signature. And uh, then we had another little art price guide that showed uh, a picture that, according to the words in the price guide, could have been this very painting. And that painting had sold in 1984, I think, for $240,000. So we thought, wow, you know, we may be onto something. After years of prospecting, Carl Rice was thinking he may have hit that jackpot he was after. But who was this MJ Heed? And how could this little painting of flowers be worth so much money? Heed was born in 1819. He started painting in 1839, 
painted until 1904, so for 65 years. Uh, he was very prolific. He was never very well known, and uh, he's a remarkable a painter in the variety of his work. Every year he painted 15 or 20 paintings. He moved around constantly. He was very much an American itinerant painter, and uh, he made a living, but it was through hard work. He was never recognized by the establishment. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that the art world started to recognize Heed, and interest in him has been growing ever since. He's considered widely thought to be one of the top dozen American painters of the 19th century. Uh, he, was, he was great. He was original. His works are memorable. But Carl and Ann Rice had never heard of him, so they followed their usual routine and wrote to the experts. My custom was, when we found a painting, to take pictures of it, write a letter, uh, send it to Christie Sotheby's Dolls, various art galleries, and um, wait for a reply. Paul Provost, curator of American Masters at Christie's in New York, was plowing through his morning mail when two small photographs stopped him short. When I first saw the photographs, um, I, was, I was thrilled. I looked at them and I said, oh, these look very interesting. I, uh, they look like paintings by Martin Johnson Heed. But of course, you can't tell an awful lot uh, from, from photographs. We got a telephone call from Dr. Provost, and he told me that he would like to come and see our painting. I knew then maybe we had a treasure. Even though the paintings were quite dirty, they hadn't been cleaned, uh, they were really untouched so that they had become quite dirty over the years, one could still see that wonderful glow of light coming from the magnolia blossoms, which is, in a sense, a signature uh, aspect of a painting by Heed. We could tell by talking to him that he was fairly certain they were original by the time he left the house. And so we were beginning to get pumped. Carl wasn't disappointed. A few months later, both paintings went to auction. Magnolia Blossoms on Blue Velvet sold for $937,000, and Cherokee Roses sold for $134,000. Our uh, initial investment in the two paintings of $60, uh, along with our three years effort, uh, gave us a payday, uh, a sale of over a million dollars, of which we received a net of over $900,000. This is maybe the greatest of all Heed's Magnolia paintings. I first became aware of it when I was at uh, an auction in New York. 19th century Heed has not only been rediscovered, he has become a darling of 21st century collectors. He is the ultimate tag sale painter. Heed's keep turning up in unlikely places and being sold in flea markets for five and ten dollars and then reaching Christie's and Sotheby's where they go for considerably more. A man in the Midwest read an article about the Rices and wondered if the painting that was on his living room wall might also be a heed. It was. Value, $750,000. A Wisconsin man had bought his for $29 and sold it for $882,000. So why are so many of these paintings showing up at tag sales? Heed's paintings appeal to a wide variety of people, but not necessarily the wealthy establishment so-called collectors. Uh, people just liked them and bought them. And then in the early 80s, he retired to Florida. And uh, he painted some of his best paintings there. A lot of those paintings were bought by tourists, so they, uh, the paintings were spread out all over the country as a result, and in the hands of people who didn't consider them great works of art. They were just something nice to hang on their walls. Their paintings have gone to their children and grandchildren who didn't know what they were. Then they get sold in tag sales. Then they end up back in New York at huge prices. So there's no other American painter who has this kind of current market history. These long overlooked canvases by an unknown American master are fetching extraordinary sums of money at auction. Most recently, yet another found heed went up for auction at Christie's in New York. Roger Olshansky bought the painting years before and had no idea what it was until he invited his friend Dale Zierton, an amateur art expert, to take a look. Some people will cringe at this point but I wet my thumb so I could get the dirt off to see the signature. And uh, in fact, it was a, a Martin that said M.J. Heed. I come back and Dale is sitting there like this. I mean, he is just, just shaking like I don't think I've ever seen anyone shake before. And he said, Roger, he said, I think we found something good. 
and I, I, I was, I was shaking when Roger came back. This, this is a great painting. This is a wonderful painting. They found out how wonderful it was when the painting went to auction again at Christie's with Roger and Dale present. Here's the heed. Magnolia's there, lot 40, showing on my right, and $140,000 starts them, 140 for them. 150,000 now, 160,000, 170,000, 180,000, 190,000, 200,000. Against you here, 220,000, 240,000, 260,000, 280,000, 300,000, 400,000 in a new place. Several of you, 450,000, 480,000, 500,000, 550,000, 600,000, 700,000, 800,000, 900,000 in a new place. One more, one million dollars. Give me 50 now, one million and 50. This telephone at one million, 150,000, one million, 200,000, one million, 250,000. All done here and selling to the telephone here, not yours, Jennifer, at one million, $250,000. One million three in time. No, not there yet. <laughs> One million three hundred and fifty thousand. All done? Sure? And selling then. This time, foul warning at one million three fifty. Well, your bidder at one million three fifty. This makes five heeds discovered in the last few years in the same manner the Rices found theirs. All have turned out to be remarkable treasure finds. The experts believe there are still many lost works of heat out there a treasure trove of American art waiting to be discovered. I know of about 700 heads. My guess is that he, that he painted about 1,300 in his career. So my feeling is there are about 600 more out there somewhere. I hope people will uh, call me if they find them. So if you happen upon a heed, how will you be able to identify it? Heads paintings are always about light. It's a distinguishing feature, whether they're pictures of the sea or the Mars scenes or the flowers. There's always a distinct source of light and the objects in them are always beautifully modeled. When we look at, at these works by Heed, these particular magnolia pictures, they're exquisite sensual paintings. The, the magnolia blossoms seem almost to have this inner light, uh, and in some situations when the blossoms are lying on a table, uh, one has this beautiful velvet that comes across, so there's this beautiful sensual quality about the paintings. The paintings of Martin Johnson Heed are great treasures because in the end, they are works of art that appeal on a personal and direct level. Art is exactly like music. It's what moves you. You feel it inside you. You can analyze for the rest of your life, but if you're not moved to start with, there's no point of beginning. I'm always out and about looking at things too. Uh, I don't think I'll be discovering something. One never knows. There's always the excitement that that could happen. Um, but um, uh, I think what's wonderful is that you might find something that doesn't have great value that you actually like, something that really appeals to you personally. Carl Rice and Roger Olshansky bought what appealed to them and now are reaping the benefits. My blood's still hot for a treasure, whether it's art or whether it's a. Uh, um, a rock or a diamond or, or whatever, and I, I really enjoy it. I probably enjoy it more now than I ever have because I know what success can taste like. I'm gonna spend the money on gambling, I'm gonna spend the money on women, I'm gonna spend it on booze, and then if there's anything left, I'm just gonna spend it foolishly.